Okay, can everybody see the slides now? <clears throat> Without irritating hip hop. Yes, I. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you can see it. Ah, awesome. Good. Let's get this going then. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, hopefully. Kicked. Yay! Excellent. That seems to work. Yay! That's great. So <laughs> somebody's going to need to be aggressively kicking because I Good. think that so, guy will keep coming back. So now, now that you get the hang of it, so uh, <laughs> let's let's get this going quickly before he comes back. Um, ODF. Everybody knows what ODF is. Open Document Format, State of the Union. Um, quick recap on. Thank you, man. Uh, good. Uh, back to the slides. Where are they? Here. Um, ODF, and uh, how did we get there, and where are we going? Um, quick introduction, who I am. Uh, my name is Thorsten Behrens. I'm working for CIB um, since 2015, built the LibreOffice team there. I'm actually one of those um, naughty people who were founding TDF LibreOffice, and I'm uh, also on the TDF board. I've been working with LibreOffice and the predecessor OpenOffice. Um, as an engineer since 2001, and as a person, I'm a hacker, computer scientist, and I'm fighting for open source and open standards. Ah, what a relief! <laughs> I think so this is going to be the theme of this. Of it's this going talk. to be it's, it, so. At, at the very least, we can say it's it was an entertaining session. Maybe not because of me. Um, <laughs> So, very quick, quick uh, walk through brief history uh, of ODF. Um, how did we get here? And um, what are we doing? Um, the deep past, it all started uh, with uh, a number of great things with Sun Microsystems. Rest in peace was a great company. Um, the inaugural TC meeting, there was some uh, inside Sun. There was already contacts to ACES uh, for other standards. Uh, so, so just people were just using that inaugural TC meeting pretty fast tracked in 2002. Yeah. So um, let me continue. Uh, so um, why why do people do that? Well, it actually um, back in the day before Sun, a star division said that XML is cool and they wanted to get rid of their binary file format. So they were pushing towards a native XML file format for know, Star Wars. And um, so, so that's where it all uh, flew from. Um, then it was re relatively quickly, ODF 1.0 in 2005, 1.1, 2007. Right. So, um, so basically, someone joins quite regularly, and they start sharing a video of Yes, yeah, sorry. Can people still hear me sorry. and see my slides? Yes. yes, we can hear you. Yep, Great. things are kind of fine now. Oh, I just, please tell me somebody's not going to spawn up. <laughs> okay, let me just continue. Um, so, uh, right, and people, please poke me because I can't see both slides and, and the room at the same time. Um, if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let me know. Um, so um, um, just speak up, uh, poke me. I will just continue. Meanwhile, um, you'll figure out what to do. Um, so what you see is there was rel relatively quick uh, progress in the first uh, five years. Then it slowed down with ODF 1 to 2 ratified in 2011 and advanced to ISO standard in 2015. And after that, um, well, you can guess it correlates with um the 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 sale uh, of selling of some microsystems and the fork um so um what still happened was the chat herding of one to, one or two that was mostly um, helped with uh, uh, by IBM uh, and then was lots of activity um but mostly in inside areas like uh uh change tracking there was this advanced document collaboration subcommittee which had uh, three competing drafts um, done in succession some of them a uh, great deal of time went into that it's actually currently dormant nothing is going on here and at some stage 2015 2016 um, work shifted back to the main tc working on so-called odf next 
uh, which is now officially ODF 1.3. Uh, but back then, there was no clear targets, really no funding and no focus. Um, and um, so 2015, there was this um, thinking, like, where are we going? Where is this heading? There was a, a number of a few hundreds of issues um, and that were targeted 1.3. Um, there was this problem, people didn't want to close issues or shift them. And um, the, the focus then shifted to standardizing pretty much existing practice. So, so rather not have this um, this Star Trek future, uh, everything is wonderful and we can render everything, every document in this world from, from every source, but rather what is actually implemented in, in software, what is provably working uh, and catching up with, with those implementations out there in the field. There was some uh, uh, great triage, um, stole that from, from Michael Stahl, 2015 to 2016, but more than a year when um, actually some focus was brought back into the standardization, something that was obviously broken already in one or two or earlier. Let's fix that for the next version feature with an implementation. So it's implemented in, I don't know, Microsoft Office or LibreOffice or OpenOffice or uh, Abbey Word. Um, great, let's take it as well. Um, great idea, but no one, no funding, no one implementing it. Okay, let's call it later. Uh, and everything else, Star Trek future, great plans of uh, um, uh, grant intellects. Uh, okay, let's close it and come back when you've got funding and have it implemented. Um, and also closing by that, by reviewing pretty much every issue, closing it metric ton of duplicates. So um, yes, but after that, what the hell are we doing now? Um, so the problem was obviously no more big players, no more um, easy way to, to get people spending time on something that is very, very boring, which is um, TC work, which is lots of admin overhead, lots of red tape, lots of process, uh, very little hacking. Um, so, so yeah, how to how to resolve that conundrum? Um, well, obviously, um, we can try with community. That was the partial success um, with, uh, uh, for example, uh, Regina Henschel, one of the uh, core contributors to the ODF 1.3 standard and doing it all as a volunteer. Um, and, um, so there was like a number of, of names in the TC, uh, Horst van den Oeuvre, uh and Andreas uh, from, I think, U University of Waterloo were doing that on, on their on spare time or partially spare time. But um, yeah, as I said, it's, it's rather boring work. So what TDF came up with, um, initial idea again from Regina was to put some money there and hoping that would help fixing that, making progress. So. Uh, the uh, TDF was um, in uh, 2018 um, uh, getting some funds approved and entrusting those funds with uh, public software CIC and uh, a UK uh, uh, charitable company, charitable or community interest corporation actually. Uh, so it's a non non-profit entity uh, chartered to uh, um, uh, attract funding for uh, continuing the ODF uh, TC work and the editing. Um, and it was successful. Uh, so um, uh, the, the COSM uh, project attracted funding from Microsoft, CIB and Collabora and was matching that with, uh, with funding uh, from TDF. So in the end, we got um, two editors um, and uh, some a bit of development work for the ODF toolkit funded uh, to get 1.3 uh, implemented, edited, Shep heard it through uh, the standardization process with the initial goals of um, uh, 1.3 actual review work starting April 2019, uh, committee draft later in 2019, and finished standard by end of 2019, which uh, as you might have seen, did not quite uh, work out like that. 
so the current status is um, uh, right now the initial funds have all been spent and we're kind of waiting for 1.3 to happen, uh, which has been almost done since pretty much the beginning of this year. Um, it's just taking an inordinate of t amount of time to fix tiny little editing mistakes. Uh, and then you have a multi-weeks delay because then you need to re-trigger this, uh, this uh, standards uh, approving process and, and getting the, uh, the OASIS uh, uh, machine to grind uh, and, and uh, get, get a new version out and putting it up for voting. So uh, that's not, not much actual work going on, just lots of busy work and, and spinning of wheels. Uh, so the hope is to have it finally done by the, or finally approved and ratified as an Oasis standard by the end of this year. So it's about one, one year delay, mostly due to editorial errors and process errors. And I will get to that in a moment. So TDF um, has approved um, follow-up funding for ODF 1.4 uh, and improvements in the editorial workflow, which are obviously necessary. Uh, so that's 10K um, new budget. Uh, also, again, for, for matching funding. So again, the call goes out to companies, corporations, uh, also perhaps governments uh, who are using and benefiting from ODF uh, to perhaps uh, chip in a little bit of money. TDF then happily matches that. Um, Right, and the editorial uh, workflow, so it's essentially lots of manual um, work, very error prone. Nobody did that in 10 years. So, so even people who did that in the past, uh, knowledge has been a bit rusty, tools have changed. It's all kind of creaky and leaky. Um, so so the, the modern way to attack that is like have some continuous integration workflow there. And I think that's achievable. Uh, beyond that, um, beyond chipping in funds and getting your funds matched by TDF, um, what, what, can you, what else can you do to help ODF? So, well, you can, of course, work on the standard. So if you're a TDF member, uh, you can join uh, the ODFTC um, and work there. Otherwise, that's, that's quite some price tag to that. But if you're a member, uh, TDF happily gets you there. Um, so, uh, of course, that is... Uh, yeah, that, that needs a bit of time. I think not, the minimum is probably an hour or two per week uh, to be able to, to read the mails and, and attend the calls, but, but likely more. Of course, you can also propose features, uh, do bug fixes and do QA work on LibreOffice and other uh, ODF processing applications. Uh, in Oasis itself, uh, join other TCs or um, Oasis projects. Um, do lobbying work, tell your uh, local MP or um, lobby inside your company uh, that ODF is a great standard. And of course, you can donate to TDF, which helps funding projects like COSM and also helps towards uh, paying the OASIS fees, the membership fees. Um, a little bit more details, uh, what's happening. So, well, updated timeline, as I said. Um, committee draft was out. Uh, committee draft uh, one was out in September 2019. So, so that there's this um, this uh, uh, kind of waterfall uh, diagram and standard committee. So you first you, you draft something, and then you you think as a committee, well, it's about done. Then you call it committee draft, which then goes to through some um, public review where you can have other people point out the obvious mistakes. Then you can get yourself. Uh, upgraded to committee specification um, uh, and um, the committee specification, uh, which has the stamp of approval and you know, the, the TC says, well, we're done, uh, which then goes out for another public review and a public vote by all TC members and then finally becomes an OASA standard. Um, so yeah, so we, we got stuck pretty much at the very beginning of that process. Um, there were issues found, omissions, um, problems in the production cycle, several attempts to fix that. Uh, there was an initial vote for committee spec in 2019, but then more errors were found. And so we have a committee spec 02 about ready to vote on now. So yeah, about one year late. And 
the hope is if nothing else goes wrong um, that we get it away as a standard end of this year. What is missing for uh, that? Shoot. OK, so if there's any questions, just uh, fire away. Um, otherwise, I will just keep talking. Um, right. Um, end of the year. So what is um, the next step after the, the, the uh, guest is um, out is a uh, of views. So everybody out there who is Or if it's something that is an uh, ODF toolkit, um, would be great to get your uh, signed uh, statement of use that you have implemented and you are very happy with uh, ODF 1.3 uh, of those products. Uh, because we need three of them uh, to advance to the next step in the standardization process. Um, you can also do marketing around at ODF. The uh, Adoption TC is uh, we open as the ODF advocacy project. As I said, tell your, tell your MP, tell your government, lobby uh, um, around uh, open data and open government. Um, go for um, um, initiatives around open standards. Open standards. Just just to state that here, that standard is publicly accessible, so no, no, um, uh, nothing hidden, no NDA. You need to sign its license and empowered. So whatever you when you implement the standard, you don't have to pay patent royalties. And the actual process of standardization is open to everyone, so it's not that it's a smoke-filled room and only special people are admitted. Everyone can join. Um, Right, given the time, yeah, maybe a quick walk through um, the uh, development projects related to ODF uh, that happened there in the past. Um, also largely done by TF, but not uh, exclusively. Um, ODF validation, which was one of the very first steps to get something that perhaps in the end, in next year, 2021, with the editorial workflow, we will come culmination that is from code to standard to written approved standard ideally that should be no losses so so what when 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 you start hacking on something and you you change the file format in LibreOffice that should ultimately end up in a change or in an update or at least in a proposal to change the standard uh, and not accidentally get lost uh, um, because nobody realized. So um, what's in place now is a way to um, um, have every unit test that uh, that uh, writes ODF files have the ODF and ODF validator run over that. And the same is true for a weekly crash testing run that essentially loads and saves every possible document uh, we can get access uh, to in, in all the bug trackers. Um, of a number of projects. Uh, so so with that, it's not impossible, but it's kind of unlikely, at least if you adhere to processes and, and write unit tests for your changes, that we detect when you change, uh, when, when you modify the, the way LibreOffice writes ODF. So if you, if you notice that unit test breaks, you have to change the schema. Changes to the schema will get flagged uh, at the latest when a release happens. Um, and then we can write a proposal uh, to the ODFTC uh, for a change. Um, and those get tracked in JIRA, so at least it's not lost there. And then hopefully it gets uh, written into the next standard. And uh, also the fact that we want to automate the, the spec writing process there. Um, so, so ideally, uh, when you do a change that affects the ODF uh, format, you, you change the uh, schema and you give us a little bit, perhaps in the commit message, a little bit of prose that describes what you're doing there, that then the ODFTC editors can use to convert that into something they can put into the standard. It doesn't have to be standard D's, just a, just a lay person description of what this is doing um, is enough to get this started. Uh, another uh, number of things like improved layer support, and there was uh, from the German Prototype Fund uh, some support for the ODF Toolkit library. 
Um, there was um, from the German uh, Federal uh, Computer Security. Um, uh, the, uh, they funded open PGP support for ODF. It's also part of ODF 1.3, the necessary amendments. Uh, and the last one was ODF 1.3, uh, converting all the extension namespace that had accumulated over some, I think the oldest one was more than 13, 14 years old, still during open office times, convert all those Oh, let's extend ODF, and at some stage we will roll it into the standard uh, uh, features. Uh, roll this back into the main or uh, ODF uh, namespace, XML namespace, which was quite a bit of work, uh, but that's happened. That's um, included in ODF 7.0 with necessary backports to the older maintained version, so that at least we can read that. Um, Right, ODF Toolkit, interesting story there. Um, initially at the Apache Foundation, um, and TDF has inherited that from Apache, and it's now maintained in the uh, the Document Foundation GitHub repository. Uh, and we're also um, TDF is also contributing and helping, uh, and it's it's an essential part of ODF and also the editorial workflow. Um, and the, uh, the the validation um, it includes the the ODF validator we're using uh, to to make sure we detect any changes. Um, yeah, a bit of marketing blurb like best standalone lib yada yada for ODF, um, plus some very very nice tools that is a prototype uh, fund uh, sponsored for decomposing a document into changes and operations. What's up next? Um, ODF Next, which is um, possibly ODF 1.4, perhaps there's going to be ODF 2.0 at some stage, so not necessarily all of those ODF Next issues going to be 1.4. Uh, quite a bit more to file from the uh, wiki page that has the ODF uh, LibreOffice ODF extensions. Um, uh, all of that needs to be rolled into the schema I mentioned that gets used by the by the unit test validation. Um, and perhaps more that's lurking in the code from, from the deep past that we have not detected yet. Um, and finally, the uh, editorial workflows, that's um, something that has to happen next year as well. Um, right now, the TC already has a re repository on GitHub. It's already as much as possible working from there for uh, for producing the standard. So when, when you need to, to change the standard, ideally you just submit a pull request. What's missing is a completely fully end-to-end -end automated CI pipeline um, to get the going, but that's planned for next year. Um, yes, and perhaps we can track other Oasis projects uh, to follow us there to adopt that as well, and then perhaps contribute uh, to the automation effort there and keep that going. Um, it's um, it's not unheard of. I mean, for, for web standards, it's it's pretty standard to do it like that. Meanwhile, it's just for, for this relatively heavyweight um, uh, standard writing that is at Oasis and at ISO in particular. Um, it's kind of trailblazing here, so yeah. The hope is that it's um, it's uh, working well and attracting others to follow that. Great. So that's the end of the uh, 30 minutes. Um, with, I'm glad no further interruptions <laughs> from funny videos. Um, thanks um, uh, for your attention. Thanks to uh, my employer for um, having me spend uh, time on great things like LibreOffice and ODF. And if there's any questions, I don't know if we have a few minutes left. I have one question. Should. Uh, how about the deprecations of uh, existing uh, properties or elements. Um, anything concrete you have in mind? Uh, 
just a general workflow. What what would we do? Uh, we is this the is the same like uh, we would add new things to ODF or for example what I have in mind is uh, like uh, gra gradients uh, maybe there are some properties that uh, aren't needed for example anymore or I, I don't think we should include them yeah so um I mean, for for many many things in, in ODF are are not mandated. So so many the, the, the wording of the standard is quite often uh, not not verbatim, but but the essence is, is it's optional. So so there's very few things that are required. So so you don't need to you don't need to be able to to correctly display every single element and attribute in the standard because the rendering is not standardized. So um, you, you, as long as you're not crashing by, by reading such a file, um, you're free to ignore it. Whether this is good user experience, whether this is um, making your friends when, when somebody loads a file from, from 10 years ago and, and something is missing, um, that's a different question. Um, so, so as such, it's um, to me, I, I think it's probably uh, unless you have a concrete proposal where, where something is, is absolutely required by the standard, and it's a burden uh, to to keep that maintained on our side and supported. I don't think it's a problem worth fixing because we can simply decide at some stage to deprecate something on on our implementation side and say, well. Here is some here, load it in six four and then save it as uh, uh, or load it in seven zero and save it as one dot three and you're going to be fine. And in five years we, we're not going to support this this attribute anymore. D does that answer the question? Oh yes yes. So, so it's. I think it's not a question for ODF. It's a. It's a question for let's say LibreOffice product or. or, or no, marketing. no, it's actually for ODF. I mean, uh, how we if there is uh, an idea if uh, we should deprecate uh, some some uh, uh, standardized features. Uh, I mean, we did something similar for the. I believe for the. Uh, a way that writers are uh, saving uh, storing tables like nested tables. So, so there's this uh, sub table versus, uh, um, I think, uh, joining rows and columns. And there was a change, I believe, in ODF 1 or 2, uh, where there was just a different table model introduced. So, so, so there's a history of actually throwing something out of the standard, but not just adding new features and then henceforth using that from from your software. Um, yeah, another example would be the um, lists for which there were uh, two different uh, representations in ODF 1.1, and the uh, one of them was deprecated in ODF 1.2 because uh, they just both allow to do the same thing with different markup, which is uh, kind of pointless. And yeah, this second one was was only implemented by K Office version one. Did we clean that up? That mess up? I think we did, or? Um, yeah, it's, it might even be possible that, that we have an issue to actually remove the duplicate markup. So it's uh, it's definitely deprecated, I'm sure of that. Okay, further questions or perhaps suggestions, great things we should do in ODF land.
Okay, just in case um, uh, something comes up, I'm on RSC and Telegram, and there's some email address uh, on the first slide. So just feel free to poke me. And with that, I'd say let's close this session. Six minutes late. Thanks so much again, and enjoy the conference. Take care. Bye.